Steve Hootman at the Rhododendron Species Botanical Garden. And we're going to do a little uh, taxonomy identification, a uh, little mini lecture here again for the YouTube, Instabook crowd sort of thing. Uh, so today we're going to look at subsection R. gyrophylla, or a few members anyway. And we will start sort of in the north in Sichuan and uh, with Floribundum here. And we will work our way uh, to the south and east and end up with Coeloneuron, or what some of you might call Coeloneuron, it's spelled C-O-E-L, uh, but I think Coeloneuron is uh, much more confusing, so that, that's not fun. But anyway, uh, we'll start with Floribundum here in the north, which is an old Wilson collection, Ernest Wilson collection, and that occurs kind of in north to central to south Sichuan, and supposedly into northwestern Guizhou and northeastern in, uh, Yunnan, which are adjacent. Uh, and it represents the northern end of another cline, which we've discussed in past mini lectures, C-L-I-N-E. So Floribundum is a well-known species. Again, Wilson collected it over a, a hundred years ago. It's a kind of, not really purple, but purplish flowers uh, for a rhododendron with a nice blotch and a very uh, bullate convex leaf with a silvery white indumentum, which is very distinct. That's classic Floribundum. You see a really distinct ornamental uh, indumentum, nice um, matte glossy foliage with uh, deeply bullate veins. Uh, moving on from that, we will go to Denudatum, which we will see next, uh, which is primarily a bit to the south and a little bit further east from where Floribundum occurs, although they do overlap. Again, this species has been around for a long time. These three species we'll be looking at today are all large, growing, vigorous evergreen shrubs or small trees even, uh, if given time. And they are perfect to the woodland garden and plants that like a decent uh, bit of shade in the afternoon and can take regular woodland soil. They're woodland plants in the wild, so it's perfect for the woodland garden, such as we have here at the RSBG. Um, and perfectly hardy uh, for most species climates. Silo Neron can be damaged in a really uh, really bad winter here even a little bit. Um, we've never lost anything, but it is the furthest south and further east and a lower elevation growing plant. We'll see that last. The Floribundum has been really hardy, as has been Denudatum. So we will now move on to Denudatum. Again, one last look at Floribundum. Beautiful flowers, typically mid-April with, uh, with us. Now we'll uh, say goodbye for a second. All right, and here we are at species number two in this cline or this complex. Uh, we were just discussing Floribundum from central and northern, primarily Sichuan. It does come into the south a bit. But as you move south uh, into south Sichuan and northeastern Yunnan and adjacent uh, northeast, northwestern Guizhou, then you run into a species called Denudatum, which is a fairly recent introduction from about 1994-95. And uh, it obviously is very closely related to Floribundum. Uh, and it is distinguished in foliage by having a flatter leaf versus a more convex. It's a bit glossier and it has a darker indumentum, more cinnamon brown versus the uh, silvery white of Floribundum. In flower, they bloom more or less at the same time. Denudatum has a much more rounded, more full inflorescence, which is paler than the almost purple, very lax inflorescence of Floribundum. So that's how you tell those two apart. They're obviously closely related, but uh, a, a more full, more flowers per truss. Uh, the Floribundum is a little floppier, and with darker flowers and paler indumentum, darker indumentum and paler flowers in Denudatum. And Denudatum is one of those, uh, what I would consider, really underused species. It's a fantastic plant, a super grower. Look at the growth you get in a year. Again, this is a woodland species, beautiful foliage, strong constitution, fantastic flowers, uh, one that should be used more often. And no, we do not have any currently available, sorry. Uh, but yeah, Floribundum, Denudatum. Next, we'll go look at the species that occurs even further south and to the east into Guizhou, which is called Silo Neron. And it's just around the corner. We'll see you in a bit. Next, we'll be looking at a species called Silo Neron, spelled 
C-O-E-L, neuron, uh, or colon neuron, some people say. And again, this is in that same cline or complex with uh, in subsection R gyrophila with floribundum and denudatum, which we've just looked at. But coeloneuron occurs even further south and to the east. So you're kind of going northwest to southeast in today's little mini lecture. Coeloneuron is quite distinct from the other two in that uh, it's actually placed currently but incorrectly in subsection uh, taliensia, but it is not a taliensia. Obviously, it's an argyrophila, so there's been a lot of confusion about that. But it has a generally much paler flower than the other two species, and it's very floriferous, which we'll see in a second here when we pan back. Uh, but it does bloom earlier, so coeloneuron is actually just sort of finishing up. So it's the first out of the three in the spring, and actually one of the earliest of all the elepidotes to bloom here at the Species Foundation. Uh, but again, it has the paler flowers, puts on masses of flowers, and in foliage, it's distinguished generally by a much more convex, narrower leaf that's matte green on the surface, uh, not shiny or partially shiny like denudatum or floribundum, and it has a fuzzy brownish indumentum. It's quite distinct. So that's coeloneuron, and we will look at a couple of other forms. That's the typical Guajau form uh, introduced by Peter Wharton back in 1994. Many people are growing that. Again, fantastic plant, super grower. Uh, it blooms like this every year. We don't even deadhead. Uh, and it forms a nice large shrub, small tree. And just stunning. This a week ago, this looked a lot better. It was a nice, a much darker color, but it's still fantastic. Next, we'll look at a, an almost white form, which I quite like. Okay, another form of coeloneuron. Uh, this is the one we were just looking at with the very convex leaf and the pale pink flowers. One of my own collections from northeastern Yunnan, uh, which I quite like, has a more plain or flattened leaf, but the same indumentum, and a much paler flower, which is sort of creamy yellow at the base, as you see here. Again, these species generally for us start blooming in February. We are now in mid-April, so they've been out quite a while and they're starting to fade out. But those are just two different forms of coeloneuron. And we will lastly look at another form, which I consider to be an intermediate between coeloneuron and denudatum. And while we're wrapping up coeloneuron, you might notice uh, that I'm tucked in here with this beautiful species of viburnum. This is a species from northern Japan, which is called viburnum furcatum. And uh, it's a deciduous one, beautiful fall color, fantastic flowers. I would say this is probably my favorite overall species of viburnum if uh, you're looking for a nice, large, deciduous shrub and can locate them. It's a beautiful thing. These were collected in the wild in Japan. Next, we'll look at, as I said, uh, a collection that I consider to be intermediate between denudatum and coeloneuron, which happens to be right here. Next, we're going to look at another uh, collection, a species that I think is probably an intermediate. Again, these are a cline going from northwest to southeast. And this is a collection I made in 95 in, uh, on the border southwestern Sichuan, northeastern Yunnan. And it is, I consider, I consider this to be an intermediate between coeloneuron and denudatum, which we looked at earlier. It blooms much later than typical coeloneuron. It has a flatter, glossier leaf than typical coeloneuron, but with a very typical coeloneuron indumentum. So this is the best plant out of all of them, I think. This is SEH122. It also has a much darker flower. Uh, going toward denudatum floribundum compared to coeloneuron, which you have in my left hand here. And as I said, it comes out quite late when most of the other collections of coeloneuron are finishing up. It's just starting to open its butts, as you see here. Stunning foliage plant, uh, SEH 122. We only have about five different clones, I think, but uh, probably my favorite out of the lot. That's just a stunning flower. Really beautiful thing. So uh, that, again, part of the cline. So this is halfway to denudatum, halfway to coeloneuron. We'll wrap up this little mini lecture uh, concerning the cline with floribundum, denudatum, and coeloneuron with another species that was considered to be part of that group, a species called Ferranosa, which is known for a single mountain in northeastern Yunnan. And Jens Nielsen finally managed to locate that several years ago, and we do have plants growing in the garden here. 
and it was considered to be a close relative of Denudatum and Coeloneron. But once Jens found it, he realized it's actually a Taliensia. So this is Pharaonosum. It, it's actually more closely related, some of you will say right away, to Wiltonii, which is fairly obvious. But again, it occurs on a single isolated mountain in northeastern, northeastern Yunnan and forms a low, very low mounding dome. We have not flowered this yet, but this is Pharaonosum, which was considered, again, an Argyrophila, but it's a Taliensia. Whereas Coeloneron, which is an Argyrophila, was considered a Taliensia. So those two were completely backwards, which is one of the reasons we're doing this lecture today to try to help people sort this confusing group out. Many of these were introduced under the wrong name or in the wrong subsection. Anyway, we'll wrap up with that. This is, Jens considers this, or did, his greatest uh, introduction, actually. It is a beautiful thing. I can't wait to see it flower. Uh, and we've just moved these into a new part of the garden. You can come and see that down below the blue poppy meadow if you happen to be in the Pacific Northwest. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at work, and I'll see if I can clarify some things, and we'll probably do another one of these in a couple weeks. Thank you all for your attention. Hope that helped. Bye.